Independence Day Resurgence is out next week, which made this a perfect opportunity to dig up some fun facts about Independence Day. Uh, the movie, not the day. I mean, this is cinefix, not, you know, history fix or like learning fix or whatever. I mean, come on. <clears throat> anyway, here are seven things you didn't know about Independence Day. Probably. Even though the events of Independence Day, aka ID4, take place around July 4th, that isn't the only reason the filmmakers named the movie Independence Day. They actually chose the name because there was another alien invasion movie in production at the same exact time, and they wanted to cement the date for ID4 and beat the competition to market. The movie in question, Mars Attacks. It was originally supposed to come out in August, just a month after ID4. Ultimately, Mars Attacks wasn't released until December, and pretty much nobody remembers or cares about that movie anyway, so I guess the Independence Day team didn't really have anything to worry about, did they? Next thing. Even though the filmmakers had pretty much always wanted the movie to be called Independence Day, they were getting a lot of pressure from Fox to change the title. What you probably didn't know is, this line at the end of Bill Pullman's speech was their ace in the hole to keep the title they wanted. Today. We celebrate our Independence Day. They crowbarred in that line about Independence Day at the very last moment, basically as their way of telling the studio, go f yourselves, we're keeping our title. Considering what a huge movie Independence Day went on to become, it's kind of surprising that they waited 20 years to do a sequel. But most people don't know just how excited the studio was about the original movie from day one. Good job, everyone. Congratulations. Dean Devlin and director Roland Emmerich finished the screenplay for ID4 while they were in a hotel room in Mexico. That detail isn't really important, but you know, it adds texture to the story. I mean, why were they in a hotel room in Mexico? Seriously, somebody go find out. Anyway, they sent the script to the studio on a Thursday back in 1995. It was greenlit by the next day and in pre-production by Monday. It's kind of a cool story because that would never happen today unless they replaced Jeff Goldblum with Spider-Man and Will Smith with Iron Man, which I'm sure is on the table. Is our victory dance? Not until the fat lady sings. Oh, yes, okay. Speaking of Jeff Goldblum, you may not have realized just how much trouble smoking that cigar caused him on set. See, Jeff Goldblum just couldn't really handle smoking a cigar. I think we can all agree that he's far too delicate. So an AD was tasked with getting the cigar lit for him. And for every moment that the cameras weren't rolling, Goldblum would hand the cigar off, giving it back to the AD to keep it going so that Goldblum wouldn't have to be around the cigar smoke. I have to say though, he certainly looks like he knows what he's doing with that cigar on camera. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is acting. Oh, so this is healthy? No, I can get used to it. <laughs> Me one Aside from I have got to get me one of these, the most memorable moment from ID4 might be when the White House gets blown up. But I bet you didn't know that shooting this particular special effect was turned into a huge event by the studio's marketing department. They built bleachers around the set and even invited the press to watch. What actually was getting blown up was a miniature White House, which is, boom, a bonus thing you didn't know. It was about 14 feet wide and 5 feet high, and it was later composited in with the alien ship and the laser beam for the final shot. They had seven cameras, including an IMAX, but they only had one backup mini White House in case it didn't work out. So having a bunch of people around watching didn't exactly take any pressure off of nailing it on the first take. Luckily, the first explosion had a good fireball, a great explosion, and the wreckage all looked perfect. So they got it on the first try. You know, in spite of the moronic PR stunt by Fox Marketing. And this is what's left of it. <laughs> I'll admit that once you've seen one submarine, you've kind of seen them all. But you still probably didn't know that this set is the same submarine that was used in Crimson Tide and in Down Periscope. Prepare for dive! Fox just happened to still have it around, so the ID4 team was able to snag a day with it for this quick scene. And that's really it. Moving on. Welcome to Earth. In the extremely unlikely event you've never seen Independence Day and you're watching this episode of Things You Didn't Know, consider this your spoiler warning for our last thing. And we're only doing this because we're good guys. You've had 20 years to watch this movie, for God's sake. In the words of my generation, up your Okay, 
Now that it's just us cool guys who saw ID4 within an appropriate time frame, we have a thing about when Randy Quaid's character flies his plane into the ship at the end. The original ending of the film actually had Russell flying his crop duster biplane. Rather than having him decide to sacrifice himself at a critical moment, he was going to head out on the mission already knowing he wouldn't return. The filmmakers thought it would be a great idea to strap a bomb to a biplane, and they just loved the image of it. But you know who didn't think it was a great idea or a believable image? Test audiences. The whole Wright Brothers suicide bomber thing was the only thing in the whole movie that just wasn't working for audiences. So at the 11th hour, they had to change Russell's plane to an F-16 and redo some 16 digital effects that they'd already done on the biplane sequence. The whole subplot of Russell being an ex-fighter pilot was added after the fact to justify these changes. That's why the haircuts in this scene don't match the rest of the movie. It was shot well after principal photography, and Randy Quaid's beard is pretty much all makeup. The time crunch also forced the team to come up with some creative solutions for special effects. So when his plane explodes, it's actually the same explosion from the Empire State Building. They just turned the explosion upside down and replaced the Empire State Building with a laser gun and then composited everything digitally. It is, almost literally, smoke and mirrors. Those were our seven things you probably didn't know about Independence Day, but let us know if you're planning to see the new sequel once it comes out next week. Be sure to check out Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies and sometimes Jeff Goldblum's delicate constitution right here on Things You Didn't Know. Goodbye. I'll take care, all right? Nothing but love for you. Nothing but love for you.